Hey everyone, um, my name is Jordan Myers and I'm super excited to talk to you today about the gifts of Holy Spirit. I'm gonna wait a few minutes just to see if everybody can um, kind of get in who wants to see. I'm gonna do a prayer first actually too, just for everyone who is, who is gonna be live. Um, oh, God, we love you. You are a good and faithful God. God, glory be to you, Lord, through what is going to be spoken today. Let it be glorifying to you. Anoint my lips, God, to speak your word completely. And I ask, God, that you prepare the hearts of everybody watching now, Lord, that they just will be like a tilled garden, ready for all these seeds to just drop into the ready soil. I thank you, Lord, that this is done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so before I get into talking about the gifts, I want to share a testimony of just me even getting to the point where I'm speaking today live. Um, I accepted the invitation to speak in early January, and then very soon later, um, it changed. Um, I was it was going to be the third week of January for me to speak, and it changed to the first week of February. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Okay, God, maybe I just have more time. Maybe that's your plan in this. And anyways, time goes by. January 19, I was in a really bad car car accident. It was a freak accident. And I I had a concussion and I had a, I had a bad brain injury. And so my mind hasn't really been the way that it normally is. It's been off. And I was like, all right, well, maybe, maybe I can't do this live because I'm not going to be able to speak. I can barely function. And um, so I was already unsure about it. And then, so let me explain first. <laughs> With having a brain injury, sometimes it's easy to forget things. Um, I could be talking and it could leave me instantly. And I might have to pause because I lose my breath um, just because of the injuries from the accident. So if I pause or I'm getting my breath or something, just be patient with me because um, that is still a thing going on in my head. And even looking at a screen can be hard for me. Um, and even reading actually is difficult for me also. It hurts my head. But by the grace of God, I'm doing this. And um, I guess the first part of the testimony is that that accident could have been way more traumatic than it could have been. It could have been fatal. Like God saved us in that accident, me and my daughter and, um, and praise God to that. And, um, the third week of January, which is when I was supposed to go live and speak was my worst week. I was dealing with anxiety. I was dealing with so many emotions. Like when I have an emotion, my head throbs and I get confused. I get disoriented and I get dizzy so I could get upset about something and then crying makes my head, I, I, I just lose all of my mental use. <laughs> so I'm crying and I'm like, I can't cry because I'm going to lose all my mental use. And so I just, the third week, it was just, it was bad. And um, in the midst of this, I had a friend invite me to a healing service at her church in which I wanted to go, but I didn't because I was tired and I, I, I don't go anywhere except physical therapy at all. I'm just at home and in physical therapy. But anyways, I'm talking to God. I'm like, should I go, God? I like, I was having a moment where I couldn't find my clothes. I couldn't find anything. My brain just wasn't working. And I'm like, should I go to this healing service? And I'm like, I'm just going to order an Uber just in case because I can't drive. And I ordered the Uber. And I'm like, God, really? Is this what you want me to do? And then my phone says, Jesus is on the way. <laughs> That was my Uber driver's name. And I'm like, all right, God, I'm going to this healing service. And I had the revelation there that God is greater than me. And even though I am limited in my functioning, he's not limited in my willing to be obedient. And so after that day, God just kept moving. And this past Monday, I had a friend call me and she asked me for prayer. And one, I didn't want to answer the phone, <laughs> but I, I felt compelled to. So I did. And then she starts talking to me. She's like, I need prayer. And as she's talking to me, it was the first time since the accident that I felt Holy Spirit just fill me 
and I didn't know what the words were, but I knew that there were words that I had to say, like this was a mission. I prayed for her. I didn't mess up my wording. It was powerful. It was beautiful. It was Holy Spirit. And God gave me that revelation again, because I keep forgetting. So God has to keep reminding me that he's greater than my brain limitations. And it felt amazing just to feel Holy Spirit moving through me. And then um, I, I lead an intercessory group of women, and it's a powerful group. It is, it is amazing, and I'm blessed to have these women in my group. Um, I had them come to my house this Tuesday yesterday because I haven't seen them again since the accident because I can't go anywhere. And they came over, and we prayed. And, and before that, um, what I'm teaching you today, I taught my son, my oldest son. And it was a shorter version of what I'm going over with you guys today about the gifts. But I wanted to teach him that before we got into prayer with intercessory so he would understand things better. And um, all of this just to say that God has set me up to be here speaking to you today. And the enemy has tried to take me out every way possible. And this challenge with my mind not being right, my brain has been one of the most difficult things I've ever experienced. And I've gone through way worse things than this. But with my mind and focus on God and positivity and, and like faith, like my mind is what I use for that. So I've been learning a whole new way to have faith in God. But that's my testimony of how important this message is that I'm about to speak to you. Because the enemy tried and he couldn't keep me. So please be patient with me. So... And I'm going to read a lot just because it helps me say, um, stay on for, uh, stay on whatever. God pressed into my heart to equip, teach, and encourage his people. Without knowledge of Holy Spirit and who he is and how he works, how can you be walking in complete obedience to him? There is a revival simmering around us now, and the Lord is preparing his people to receive and operate in a new fire that many of you maybe haven't even experienced yet. And this isn't a new power. In fact, it's just the power of God that lives inside of us and those who believe in him. And I love teaching about Holy Spirit because with knowledge comes power. If you were to purchase a tool set, like a full set of tools, like everything you could ever need, but you didn't know what they were called and you didn't know how to use them, then they wouldn't benefit you. You would have no idea what to do with them and you'd have this amazing tool set in your possession and you couldn't do anything with them. So like, how would that work? And I feel like Holy Spirit is the same way inside of us. There are so many gifts that we have that come along with him being in us. And, um, and this is why I'm so passionate about teaching on it. So this journey that I'm inviting you on requires a deeper level of surrender, of boldness, faith, and an increase in the expectations that you have for yourself. I know some of you have been eagerly seeking God and knowing in your spirit and soul that there's more. There's more to this intimate relationship with Christ than just attending church and serving in the regular day-to-day -day things. And in order to allow Holy Spirit to flow through you freely and with ease, you must be in communication with him. You have to believe in him and what he will do through you. You must be open to hearing the tiny whispers of God, recognizing that pull to do and say what he's calling you to do and, and understanding that God is going to do that through you. And so, oh, oops, I think I actually do have to turn my computer on for a minute. So the first thing I want to talk about are the miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on the earth. And I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'm going to list a few of them. And I'm also going to um, put a copy in the comments when I'm done so you guys can all see this. So some of the miracles that Jesus performed, what he did while he was on earth, was he turned water into wine. He calmed a storm with his words. He raised people from the dead. He healed the man with leprosy. He healed the blind. Um, he, he spoke to a fig tree and it died. These are things that Jesus did. There are a lot more. And I'm going to share that with you so you guys have all the scriptures. That's what Jesus did while he was on earth. And I want to start with this scripture. John 14, 12 through, 12 through 14. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me 
will do what I have been doing. He will even do greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and it will be done. I want to point out that Jesus did not say the pastors, the evangelist, the apostles will do the things I have been doing. He said, anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. That's you, that's me, that's anyone on this earth who has faith in Jesus. He says, you will do what I've been doing. And he doesn't stop there. He continues to say, you will do even greater things than these. Greater things than the miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on earth. That is mind-blowing. So, it's mind-blowing to me that this is what he's saying to us. And then Jesus continues... In John 14, 15 through 17, if you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. He lives with you and will be in you. So what the scripture is saying here is that one, if you love me, you will obey what I command. You love me, obey me. That's as simple as it gets. But he also says that the father's going to give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth, which is Holy Spirit, and that he lives with you and inside of you. So this scripture is stating that God is giving us Holy Spirit. He lives inside of us and he lives with us. And I feel like it's important to understand that Holy Spirit lives inside of us because when you know that he lives inside of you and then you understand these things I'm going to explain next then you understand that these are the things that are inside of you now I want to go over the fruits of the spirit first really quick because a lot of you may not know what the gifts of the spirit are and some people confuse the gifts with the fruit so the fruit of the spirit are listened are listed in Galatians 5 22 But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And another word I feel like for self-control could be long-suffering because it is hard when we don't do what we want and we have self-control. Now, the fruits of the spirit, this is the evidence that you're living life led by Holy Spirit. These are things that you're going to produce. These are character traits that you will show living a life being led by Holy Spirit. That's what the, that's what the fruits are. And it's interesting because there are nine fruits and there are nine gifts. So the Holy Spirit gifts, I'm going to read first Corinthians 12, seven through 11, which is where you first see all of the gifts, all of the gifts listed. And then I'm going to go through them and I'm going to define them in a way that I feel like is understandable to define them. But I'm going to get a drink of Okay, so 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge. By means of that same spirit, to another faith, by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers to another prophecy, to another the distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. I want to point out how it's very obvious that it's being stressed to us that all of these gifts being listed are from the same spirit. And they say that over and over again, same spirit, one spirit. These are the gifts of Holy Spirit, the one Holy Spirit that lives within us when we choose to receive Jesus and and believe the gospel. So these are the gifts. So the, so the message of wisdom, I call the word words of wisdom because that's just how I understand it. So the words of wisdom are Holy Spirit inspired wisdom to share with somebody and that doesn't come from our own mind or our own thoughts or our own ideas but it's supernaturally downloaded into you to be able to speak to somebody else for the glory of god okay so 
An example of words of wisdom would be, um, let's say I was having um, problems with submission in marriage and I'm somewhere and a woman approaches me and starts sharing, I have a word from God for you and I believe that, and she starts to um, give me wisdom on being submissive, right? She doesn't know my life, she doesn't know me, but she's giving me wisdom about things I need wisdom on. So it's just supernatural wisdom that's given for you to give, share to somebody else. So words of knowledge is similar, but it's Holy Spirit inspired knowledge about somebody else that we don't know in our own mind, in our own understanding, but that Holy Spirit downloads into our mind. So my example for that is when I was a teenager, I was at a conference with a church I didn't attend, seeing leaders or speakers I didn't know. I never talked to them before. And one of their prayer people came up to me and started talking about all the things in specific detail about my life that nobody there knew. That was Holy Spirit giving that person knowledge and information about my life so that you know God could connect with me. Faith. So the gift of faith. This is not the faith that everybody has a certain measure of and faith in Jesus. This is a supernatural faith. This is faith. It's believing beyond what is normal and natural. So by natural means, it's believing beyond that. Something that's impossible for humans. So my, without any, without having any evidence. So it's something that's, that's beyond our natural and um, human means, something that we, that a human cannot do. And there's no evidence of it. Like there's no evidence to back up this belief, this supernatural belief, this powerful belief. And so my example of the gift of faith is that there was a time when, um, I was alone with our youngest son, Elijah, and it was storming really bad outside and I was scared. I was really scared. I, I don't like lightning. Everybody was gone but me and him and I don't remember exactly what I was thinking, but I went outside and my little three-year-old, two-year-old, whatever came with me and I put my hand out and I spoke to the storm and I told the storm to go and it did. It was like lightning in our backyard and it immediately just got sunny over our area in our house and the storm was still around, but it was like, it wasn't there anymore. And my confirmation of this like faith being really what happened, well, there wasn't any evidence. I couldn't say that this is, you know, I couldn't say like, I spoke this and there's no evidence of that. It was just, it's supernatural. I got a text message, like not even a minute after that from someone who I haven't talked to in years. I wasn't super connected to. They randomly sent me this message that said, you are a mighty force to be reckoned with. And that for me was my confirmation that what I believed God did. And so that's my example of the gift of faith. Now the gift of healing. This is when I feel like this is the easiest gift to understand. It's when there is um, a healing through prayer or touching of somebody and um, and they're healed. Like they're either healed in that moment or they're like they're, over time, like something disappears, like that's healing. I feel like everybody can understand healing. Now, miraculous powers. This is a physical manifestation of supernatural powers, like a physical manifestation. So like faith, there is no physical, there's no like evidence, but with Miraculous powers, there is a physical manifestation. So that's like if somebody is to pray and pull out somebody's leg when their legs are uneven. If you are to pray out a demon of somebody, like physically, that is, that's happening. And then miraculous powers, again, the list of things that Jesus did also. So prophecy, the gift of prophecy. Prophesying, and we all know from like the books, there's, there's books of the prophets where they spoke what was going to happen in the future. And basically prophesying is speaking something that is Holy Spirit inspired completely because this is beyond our human natural knowledge about something that could happen in the future, that will happen in the future, that God has downloaded that information into us. 
but also words of wisdom and knowledge kind of intertwine with, with the gift of prophecy because when you are prophesying, there are usually words of wisdom and knowledge in, included in, in that prophecy, whether it's like direction or um, just words of knowledge so that there is a belief that the prophetic word is, is true. The distinguishing between spirits. So you could also call this gift discernment. So the, the distinguishing between spirits. So for, the best way for me to explain this is, is like, it's kind of like it says, you're distinguishing between the spirits. So whether you're looking at a person and you know supernaturally with Holy Spirit knowledge, not your own, how much Holy Spirit is inside this person and how much demonic is in this person. You can, you know, you can discern the difference between the goodness and the badness in, in people like spiritually, but also even further is to distinguish good and bad spirits in with your natural eyes. So being able to see demons or see angels because the spiritual realm that surrounds us is more real than anything we can see with our physical eyes. Our physical eyes and our human brains are so limited in what we can understand or know and the spirit world around us is what is truly true. So it's the realest thing there is. So being able to see the spiritual realm with your physical eyes and being able to see the spiritual within a person is what the distinguishing of spirits is. And my example for that, I'll try to make it really quick. Um, we were doing a prom event and there was a, this 18 year old kid who came, our friend brought on to help and Oh my goodness. Like I'm, I don't think it matters if I, sh if I share details, but he was like, he did like ROTC, super respectful, super mindful, super intelligent, said all the right things, super kind. I'm like, dang, we need like a hundred of he's a hundred of him to work for our company. Um, fast forward into the event. Um, and I step out to go to the bathroom and on my way to the bathroom, I get this sickening feeling in my stomach. I feel nauseated. I feel disgust. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Why do I feel these things so deeply? And I ask my husband, I'm like, hey, where is so-and-so? He's like, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know where so-and-so is, but whatever he, whatever they're doing, it's perverted, it's evil, and it's demonic. I, I do, I'm very uncomfortable. I don't think that they should be with us anymore because obviously we're at a high school. Um, anyways... Let's fast forward. Um, nobody really heeded that warning, um, but but I I knew that. A couple weeks later, um, our friend's daughter was raped by that person, and when I found out about that, I was like, when I was upset because you know God did reveal that to me through discernment what was going on there, but I like, I didn't have any proof to show for it. But anyways, that's my example of discernment where I knew nothing. And what I saw looked amazing. There was no part of me that could see or feel or know anything about the deep intentions of the heart of this person, except Holy Spirit giving me that discernment to distinguish that. Okay. So the next is the gift of different types of tongues. Now, um, so different kinds of tongues can be, uh, there's a few things. So there is the tongues that is edifying, that is edifying for you and your intimacy with God. And that's um, the utterances where you're not speaking English or a language. It's like a heavenly language. Then there's speaking in tongues where you could be in a position somewhere and God has you speak like Spanish or German, and you don't know those languages at all, but you just begin to speak in obedience and Holy Spirit is speaking that language through you. And there's somebody who understands that language that is receiving that message from you. So there's those different, those, those two different kinds of tongues. And then the next is the interpretation of tongues. So the tongues is also known in unknown languages, just to clarify that. Um, the interpretations of tongues is Holy Spirit interpreting interpreting the heavenly utterance. So there could be an occasion where you are speaking tongues, which would be an utterance. And if you are speaking publicly because God called you to speak publicly, then there would need to be an interpreter to understand that. 
So this is my explanation of the gifts. And um, we are going to go further. Um, the next scripture I want to go over is Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Honestly, all of Acts is really good to read for understanding about tongues and the baptism of fire. Um, I'm not going to get deep into that today because I just want to stick to the gifts and give everybody a basic knowledge on that. So, but this scripture says, which Jesus said, you will receive power when Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses. So what I read in that is that when we receive Holy Spirit and he fills us, that we receive power. There is a power in the gifts that we just talked about and we will be his witnesses, meaning we will be witnesses using these gifts. So there is a, in, in regards to tongues, there is a proper way to, to use it in an improper way. And 1 Corinthians 14 speaks about that. I'm only going to go over a few scriptures. So 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So this scripture is saying, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. So it's clear that we are to eagerly, not just even desire, but eagerly desire spiritual gifts, and especially the gift of prophesying. And if you read in um, fully uh, 1 Corinthians 14, um, it does go over how if you are to speak in tongues in public or around people, that there, there must be an interpreter. You're not just to go all out speaking in tongues and there's no interpreter and nobody knows what you're saying. Um, so, but all of those details are going to be in um, 1 Corinthians 14. So, speaking in tongues when you're praying can be referred to as praying in the spirit. That's what I call it, praying in the spirit, because I'm not praying in English. I'm not praying in my own mind. I'm praying in the spirit. So understanding that in Romans, when we are told that what we are weak, when we are weak and don't know what to pray, that Holy Spirit gets in the middle of a, middle for us and prays what we need. For me, I have read that scripture my whole life, but there was one time when I read that scripture and it felt just so romantic that my God loved me so much that even when I don't know what to say, he will say it through me, through my obedience of praying in the spirit. And it's going to be his perfect will. And that's just beautiful to me. Like, not only does he tell us to pray without ceasing, but he will pray for us when we don't even know what to say. And the scripture is... Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And that's, you know, with groans and words, words that cannot express. So it's, this is clearly describing like the Holy Spirit's interceding for us with groans that words cannot express. So the utterance of, of praying in tongues. And then Ephesians 6, 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. That's just another instruction of praying in the spirit. Um, so Jude 1, 20 says, but you dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. And then in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, 18, Paul says, I thank God that I speak tongues more than all of you. There is a scripture that I don't have in here, but... It also says in the Bible that um, we don't know the mind of God. We don't know the mind of God, but the Holy Spirit inside of us does know the mind of God. And he speaks God's perfect will through us because he does know the mind of God because it's God's spirit. And so that is probably one of my favorite scriptures that I don't have in here, but 
Um, I will put it in the comments, but it's, it's God's perfect will. We don't know that, but Holy Spirit knows that. And if we don't know God's perfect will for our lives, but we can always pray, God, let your perfect will be done, you know, in us on earth as it is in heaven. If we don't know God's perfect will, how can we be speaking that over ourselves if we're not praying in the spirit? This, the gift from my understanding and my experiences, the gift of tongues, this is a power that is of Holy Spirit that is inside of all of us. And that is for everyone. Like that gift is for everyone because it edifies us and it, and it, and it, creates an, intim an intimacy with God because we're praying his perfect will and the obedience and the faith that it takes to be able to do something that is different and not normal and not natural, you know, that takes a lot of blind faith. And, you know, it kind of goes back to where it says like, you know, you have to have a childlike faith to get into heaven. You got to travel a narrow road. It's not something common. It's not something normal. It's not something natural. Like, being a Christian is not living in a natural life. It's a supernatural life. And all those gifts of the spirit, those are all supernatural things that are things that can't be explained in a, in a human way to like really grasp that. Like the miracles that Jesus did, you just can't explain that with our own human knowledge. And so those are all the gifts. That's all my things on the gifts. And now I want to talk about the power of Holy Spirit that God has given us through, through the Holy Spirit. So Luke 10, 19 through 20 says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This scripture says that God has given us the authority to overcome the power of the enemy, which means we can speak, rebuke, the demons, the darkness, the evil, we can speak to it and it must submit not to us, but to the Holy Spirit inside of us through our obedience of speaking the rebuke. They have to go. And this is not to be confused with anything great that is within us. But he says specifically, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. It is for God's glory that we can rebuke the enemy and it's his glory alone and not ours. So don't be conceited about it is what that was saying. And then Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is telling us that our, our spouse is not the enemy. Our children are not the enemy. That coworker that is like borderline abusive and a bully is not our enemy. The people who mis mistreat us and gossip about our families, not our enemy. Even our abusers, not our enemy. It's very clear. Our struggle is not with the natural. It is with the supernatural, it is with the rulers and the authorities and the powers of darkness. That is the, oh, wow, I'm so sorry. I, I lost my thought. But that is what we're battling. And so this authority from Luke 10 to rebuke the enemy is what we have to use, not against people, but against the darkness and just it's more explaining how the spiritual realm the supernatural is what is what is common like that is this like walking with Jesus is a supernatural life the gifts of the spirit are supernatural our battle is supernatural because it's things that we can't see sometimes we can see them with the gift of discernment um so our issues our battles are never with people and the only way to rid darkness in around people or situations is to have unconditional love and radical love, love that's through Holy Spirit. That's beyond what we're able to, to do and understand. So first Peter four, eight kind of just kind of goes into that above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. So now we're talking about there's there's power in the authority in us. And now we're talking about the power of love, the power of loving somebody deeply 
can cover their sins, which goes back to the cross. Jesus's love for us, he shed his blood for us so that we could be forgiven. And we need to be and walk like Christ. Love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. And there's power in that. I know you all know this scripture, but I'm going to read it because I, because now we've talked about the power that's in love. So let me read the definition of love so you know the lines, the measures that you need to follow when you're loving people so that that power of love can be used through you. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And this is how we must love every person. We all know this verse, but is it truly instilled into our hearts and reaching out to the people that we are around, whether it's in our family or just wherever we go in our everyday life? That's something that you need to ask yourself. Is God able to work through you through the power of love? And then the last thing I want to go over are some instructions. In 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17, it says, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from who you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. I'm starting to struggle a little bit now. So the scripture is saying that you need... I have gone over with you guys the gifts of the Spirit. I've defined the gifts of the Spirit and I've given you examples of it. And we've gone over the power that is in Holy Spirit within us. The power over the enemy. The power in love. The powers of healing. Miracles. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Words of, words of knowledge. Words of wisdom. Discernment. Prophecy. Healing. And faith. <laughs> All that power. Okay? Continue in what you have learned because you have been convinced of it. And you've known the Bible for however long you've known it. And it's all God-breathed. Useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. So that you may be equipped for every good work that God has for you. Because God does not have the mundane and the plain and the natural set for you. You are all anointed to operate in all of these gifts of Holy Spirit. It, they were all for you. And it they, they equip you to do the works that God has set before you. So 2 Timothy 4, 1, 5 through... I'm sorry. This is... Oh, I, I didn't fix that. 2 Timothy. I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and courage with great patience and careful, careful instruction. Preach the word. Be prepared in and out of season, correcting, rebuking, and teaching. We need to stay prepared, equipped, in and out of season. Basically, these scriptures are saying what you're learning now, do it. Having knowledge of the gifts inside of you and how they work is the first step to becoming an incredible obedient vessel for God to work through you to do his radical work. And the last scripture today is Mark 16, 15. And Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. I want to pause there. No one has a problem with the scripture. Everybody is all about going all into the world and preaching the good news to all creation. Everybody believes this part. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Again, very clear. People understand that. Here's the part that people have a problem with or that they leave out. And these signs will accompany those who believe. And I want to point out again, it says those who believe 
It doesn't say pastors, evangelists, apostles, megachurch pastors. It says signs will accompany those who believe. Do you believe? This is it's talking to you. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick people. <clears throat> and they will get well. <clears throat> Sorry. Not sure what that is. Um, very clear. These signs will accompany those who believe. And I want to go back to the original scripture where Jesus also said this. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith will be doing what I have been doing. And he will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father and he's going to send you a counselor. I'm sorry, that's a different scripture. I'm going to the Father and he will do whatever I ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. And you ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And then the next scripture, it says that, um, that he is going and that the Father is going to send a counselor, the Holy Spirit, to live with us and in us. So if you believe and have faith, the things described in Mark 16 will follow you. This is what Jesus has instructed us. Very specifically, he instructed us. When I hear the word, go into the world, I hear go into your cities your stores, your restaurants, go into the streets, go into the world, go everywhere into the world, wherever the world is, go there. God has called us to more than just attending church and volunteering and tithing and the other more natural physical things that the Bible instructs us to do. God has called you to so much more than that daughter of God and son of God. He has called you to so much more than just that. And it's time for Holy Spirit to get back into this game. It's time for Holy Spirit to be able to move freely as God would like him to through all of us. Are you willing to give him, all of you as a vessel, to do what Jesus did and greater? I hope that, I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that you were able to learn something maybe new you didn't know or I'm... I'm believing that. I'm believing that God is moving, is moving through this teaching. And I want to end with a prayer for anybody who is truly desiring these things. Because if you're desiring it, you're eagerly seeking it. God says that if you seek me first with all of your heart, that I will give you the desires of your heart. And if you are eagerly seeking the desire and desiring the spiritual gifts, your your alignment, you're in alignment with his word seeking him and desiring what he wants you to desire then he says that he will give you the things that you ask in his name so that the so that jesus can glorify god in that so i want to pray for all those of you who are who are there hmm. heavenly father god you know the hearts and the minds and the souls of your children who are listening now you know their unbeliefs you know their fears you know the walls of limitations that have been keeping them from fully operating in the gifts of your holy spirit lord so right now god i thank you for breaking down those walls i thank you god for opening hearts and minds i thank you lord that every deception and manipulation that the enemy has spoken into these people who have this desire that you just that these words just dissipate they disappear and they just crumble into dust, God. And that in those places where these empty words were filling them with doubt and unbelief or fear, that God, your Holy Spirit just enters into them and fills them in a brand new way, God. I ask, Lord, that anybody who desires that they receive the baptism of Holy Spirit, God, that they, that they receive that confirmation from you that this is for them not just for other people, but it is for them. So God, I thank you. I thank you for softening hearts. Thank you, God, for, for all fear and unbelief going in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that your children that are eagerly seeking and desiring these gifts, God, that they are revealed to them. 
that they begin to have new revelations of these things and that they begin to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that this is done in the name of Jesus so that the Son can glorify the Father. And God, not even my will and what I'm requesting, but God, your perfect will be done in each person that is listening right now. Your perfect will be done in them, God, on earth today as it is in heaven in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you guys for listening and thank you Unforsaken for letting me speak. Um, I hope that you guys have a great day today.